Hey folks, it's time for Twip Pro Photo Critique number 39. This is Twip. Hey, welcome back to another Twip Pro Photo Critique. This is the show where we dive into some of the submissions that have come into the Twip Pro community's photo critique topic. I'm sitting here with my partner in crime, Mr. Troy Miller, to talk through these latest submissions. Hey, man, what's going on today? It's one of those days. We're just a lot of camera time today. I know. We just ra we wrapped up uh, another show, our, our photo critique of the pets challenge and got through we that. Did. And now we're here to go through the non-pets. So it should be exciting, yeah. huh? Yeah, it's fun. And it's ceramics day. So today I get to go make some more ceramics. Oh, don't tell anybody about the ceramics because we, we got <laughs> we to gotta reveal what that little project is, a side project. We got to reveal right. what that is later because it's, uh, okay. you know, it's important. That's going to that's gonna change the world. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't laugh. It will. So. <laughs> No, this is good. I'm I'm excited. I think we should just dive right in. There's a there's a yeah, lot to, there's a lot to go through. I think I'm going to start from the, start from the top and work my way down. Um, Got it. So let's uh, let's bring up. Let's bring How up. is it that Peter sneaks in in the eleventh hour always? Peter loves it. I know. He's uh, I don't know. He's stealthy that way. So 33 minutes ago, he just. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at this one from Peter. Uh, this is in St. Petersburg. Look at that. All nice. right. That's kind of stunning. Yeah. It's, it's very Harry Potter. Mm hmm. Yeah. I was thinking Tim Burton. Ooh. Right. Yes. Yeah. It's got the yes. Tim Burton kind of stop action animation feel to it. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is really great. I, I wish the scaffolding and stuff wasn't in there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I might I might be compelled to remove those just to clean it up. I mean, I, I know that he couldn't manage that, and, you know, because they were there, right? Yeah. Um, but what an what an amazing capture! I, I love it. I even like the heavy processing and the heavy vignette because it makes it just feel all that more mysterious. Mm -hmm. It makes and it feel ethereal. smaller too. I, for some reason, the heavy vignette makes it feel it has that sort of miniature effect. You know, you can get that with oversaturation and the and uh and blurring the foreground and background you can go for that little miniature effect this the, he's not doing that but for some for some reason that vignette makes me think this is miniature i don't know why right right i, I would love to know more about like what's the name of this building so i could look it up because i i'm very intrigued by this it looks like it's all made out of wood um like a movie set it like I, it doesn't look like it would be real but i'm pretty sure that he shot this you know, somewhere in Russia. Uh huh. Yeah, it's before before Russian construction techniques caught up and they started doing <laughs> modern construction. They were kind of using this kind of stuff, which is we don't have anything like this in the U.S. that I know of. That's a that's some craftsmanship to put this together. Though. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, very cool. All right, Peter always finds the bizarre. I know he's a he's cool that way. All right, here's another one, Helsinki. Look at this. Speaking of bizarre, how about this for looking in places, you know, where normal people wouldn't necessarily look? I have no idea where this is. This is probably some sort of sculpture that's uh, somewhere in Helsinki. And then Peter's like, well, how can I get a good shot of it? Let me get underneath it. And she, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm betting that's what happened. You know, that's uh, this is this is a cool shot. This is definitely an abstract that could hang on a wall somewhere, you know, like we say. And I know what yeah. you're going to say. You, you're you probably going to say, yeah, it's great, but uh, black and white. Would <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it, it's it's probably monochromatic enough as it is for me. I, I mean, I, I, was I like say that. that. Yes. There's, yeah. Um, what, I, what I'm not a big fan of is the heavy highlights being burned down so much. I don't think it's a problem leaving the highlights. You know, you could crop that little highlight trap on the left. You could crop in just a little bit, get rid of that. But the rest of it, I'm I'm okay. The dead center and you know the sky. I think that's a good contrast. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's been heavy handed in the in the processing. So if, you were, if you were judging this for a contest, that's the is that the criticisms you would you would put on this one? Yeah, I uh, not being able to see it. I mean, I would probably merit it. I just it would probably just receive a merit, but because of the over processing and the heavy handedness, I don't think it would go much higher. Okay. All right. 
All right. Well, thank you, Peter Levshin, for uh, submitting that. Moving right along, our friend Kyle Nishioka. Um, this, he said this is a quick portrait of a cosplay model named Marie dressed in, uh, I, can, I never can pronounce her name, Daenerys Targaryen from Game of Thrones. All right, let's bring Game of Thrones up here. All right. Yeah. What do you think? A little I was a little confused uh, when this image came up. I mean, you know, kudos to the model, beautiful model, uh, cool outfit. Um, I've never watched Game of Thrones, so I have no idea how authentic any of that is. What is the matter um, with you? You've never watched Game of Thrones. <laughs> it's, not, it's not my genre. Oh. <laughs> it's just, you yeah. know, and it's exceedingly violent, and I don't, I don't need to watch more violence. Yeah, yeah. But the shot, but, though, what do, you, what, do you, what do you think of the shot? I mean, like, I, I think like, I, give, give us your like, first of all, with this merit in a photo competition. The way that it's presented, it would not, because I'm not sure why the top half of the image is soft and the bottom half of the image is sort of crisp and contrasty. And I think that's going to be confusing uh, to the viewer, especially to a judge, it doesn't, it, it's not consistent. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. If that was intentional or if that was an accident, um, because it makes the whole features of the face soft, the eyes go soft. They don't, they don't really pop. So when you apply an effect, think about how it complements the image as opposed to just apply an effect. Mm -hmm. If that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. What about the pose of this? I mean, you're, I mean, you're a portrait artist, you know, you mean by def by default as, you know, being a wedding photographer, but the pose of this one, like, give me your thoughts on, on how you would pose this differently if you were to pose it differently. You know, I would, I would like to see her turn her body to the left a little bit more. Like you have to, so imagine her rotating her feet and her hips and her, and her, and her shoulders and everything to the left. Mm -hmm. And then with just her shoulders, a slight twist back to you and weight on one leg. And that's going to drop her shoulder. It's going to give it more of a, of a sexy kind of pose, a more sultry look and less broad shoulders and square to the camera. Mm -hmm. I think that's always good. And it also gives the head a little turn. And gives you the opportunity for better direction of light across the face. Okay. Nice. Look at that. You sound like you know what you're doing. That's amazing. I just make this stuff up, man. I have notes. I just. <laughs> if you ask this, then say this. <laughs> Wait on one leg. And, yeah. All right. Kyle Nishioka, thanks for that. Moving right along. All right. Eric Joseph. Um, Eric says he shot this at a Chris Orwig workshop at photo plus expo in new york this past week um at uh chris orwig's inner art of Por portraiture let's see what this is all right this is another portraiture one i'm gonna throw it to you because you are <laughs> you are a portraitist and you see um, things, well you see things that i don't see i see obvious things when it comes to this kind of stuff yeah yeah you know i love the smirk the smile i think that's a, a really really cute shot i think that's really great this is one of those kind of portraits that you know if i was looking through my images and i came up with this i'd be like okay we can sell this one mm -hmm. um her eyes are not sharp though yeah uh her hat is sharp her eyes are not sharp so that's a bummer yeah, i think that you know nailing that focus is is pretty important yeah Plus, there's some Photoshop-y stuff I can Where? see going on. Where do you see Photoshop? Uh, on her right, her left shoulder, camera right. Um, oh, looks like yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, some burning has, has leaked over onto her, onto her shoulder there a little bit. Okay. But I love the direction of light. I think that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I, I'm always a fan of portraits on, on black backgrounds for some reason. I tend to like those. They just seem mysterious and and... The, you know, it, 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 it always makes me think you could do this portrait anywhere because it's location independent, you know, and it still has that sort of dark sort of contrasty look, but not. I know. Yeah. And you can, um, quality light is everywhere. You just have to find it. And then when I walk into a scene, like at a wedding, the very first thing that I do is I look for backgrounds mm -hmm. because I can put somebody anywhere in a room. And if that, if my background is complimentary, then I can add whatever light I need to make it work. Mm -hmm. So backgrounds are always the first thing I look for. And then I either use the light that's available or I, or I create my own light. Do you go through life looking at backgrounds, like seeing the world? Like I'm, you do, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm tortured by, by, by light. 
and uh, specks and things on the walls because oh, that's just a healing brush. I could take that that light switch out or that smudge yeah. on the floor. Oh no, you're retouching your world. <laughs> yeah, I retouch my world, and I and I sit I sit at lunch, you know, or something across from a friend of mine. I look across the table and I'm like, oh, think to myself, the light on her is beautiful. But now I'm staring, so everybody just thinks I'm weird. Uh huh. And you're and you're drooling, and you're looking at some attractive <laughs> woman. Yeah, yeah. That it can, can end, be anybody. It could end badly. Yeah. It could be, <laughs> why is he staring at my dog and drooling? I don't know. What's <laughs> good light is good light. Good man. light is good light. Yeah, that's the affliction of the photographer, right? You're looking around and you start seeing stuff. Like I was talking to Renee Robin a while back, and Renee. Um, like she's tortured as well going through life capturing backgrounds for composites right right because imagine that you're just going around well look at that look at that graffiti wall i gotta get that and you just take it with you yeah 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 and see and see i'm tortured by renee because i walk around and i see all those textures and i think oh how would renee photograph this like (laughs) i don't have the skill to use this background at all yeah you know yeah but i'm like I think she would, I think she would shoot it like this, you know? So my, my whole life is edited and composited and, oh, that those clouds would have been here yesterday or can I have these clouds for tomorrow? (laughs) Uh I love it. I love it. Yeah. The world of compositing, by the way, I just put it, I just pressed a button that added laughter into this show because I'm testing it to see if it would record. (laughs) So if you heard laughter, that was not a live studio audience. That was me nerding out and pressing a button on my control thing here. All right. uh, Back to the critique. All right. Here we are. So let's move out of this shot. Thank you, Eric Joseph, for that. And we're moving down. Tim Engel, pregame locker room. Let's bring this up here. All right. Tim is all about shooting football. He's like, I think he's at football more than he's at home, high school football shooting his kids. <laughs> um, well, he does it well, too. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I can see what he was going for with this. This is this is interesting, you know, from the from the lone player on the left, you know. It, so when my when I look at this, my eye is looking at the lone player on the left. And re, then I read his shirt, casserole. Um, then I look up and I see the loud speaker there. And then I look to the right and I see selfie, hashtag selfie. And then I see that, oh, that's a mirror. There are people looking into the, you know, into the mirror up in that general direction. So I see this triangle. My head is filling this triangle with a lot of white void space in the middle. And then so from a technical standpoint, I like it. I like what's what's going on here. From a, a compositional standpoint, I look at the shot and I think, or, or a storytelling standpoint, I look at the shot, I think, did they just lose the game? You know, this guy's dejected. He's sitting there because he, he fumbled at the last minute or something happened, you know, and it, it sort of speaks to the whole idea of storytelling in, in photography like this. What do you think? No, and that's absolutely true. This also speaks a lot to um, intentionalism in your images, Mm. you know, taking the time to build and make an image that's intentional. It's not about how fast you do it, but it's about this image is intentional. Like, like he saw the mirror, he put the player there, you know, we're, we're, we're not stacking his head directly on that line. So it's coming straight on top of his head. The speaker is offset a little bit. I mean, all those things, even if we don't think about them as photographers all the time, this is an intentional shot, and that's one of the reasons that I really love it. Mm-hmm. Um, I can tell that the photographer put an effort into getting this right as he could in that moment as a yeah. photojournalistic shot I'm putting in that category. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it tells an amazing story. There's a lot of things that you could read into this one, but it's, it, it, it does the job. Um, if it was going to go into competition outside of photojournalism, you know, there's you might want to clean up that reflection on the left. You might want to take that line out, you know, a speck on the wall, little things. But other than that, it's 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 very well done. Yeah. But can you take that stuff out if it's going no, into a photojournalism? Not in photojournalism. Category? not in photojournalism, right? Yeah. No, no, you can't. You can't take that stuff out. No, no. Um, if this was a photojournalistic image, uh, you know, I might have suggested that, you know, if if you could wait for the for the player to move to hit the player's left or you could move a little bit to your left to get that line off of his face. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a small it's a small thing. It's, it's small. not. Yeah, I wouldn't knock points off for that because that's everything else is there. 
Nice. So this would be a high score for photojournalism. Nice. Look at that. I would. I would. All right. Tim Engel, you hear that? You can go celebrate. Trey Miller said you would get a high score for <laughs> photojournalism with that show. All right. Ryan Kanzler Kans- is here, and he says uh, the caption is photo critique um, this headshot of my girlfriend. All right. Let's bring Ryan's girlfriend up. Look at that. Yeah, those eyes look right through you, don't they? Yeah, sense. yeah. I think I think Ryan's lucky to have such a beautiful model, mm-hmm. and that she's willing to to stand in front of the camera for him. So that's that's awesome. Yep, congratulations. Uh, yeah, I love that. I love that look. That intense look. That slight white underneath the eye. Mm-hmm. You know that sh- that shows us that she's looking up. I love that. I even like the tight crop on her face. I think that works fantastic. Mm. Um, not a fan of her hands, though. You know, looking into the palm of her hand. It makes you think, right? You're like, A, what is that mass over there? Oh, it's skin. Oh, it's hands. I see a thumb. And then why are, why are they there? Right? That's, what, that's where my brain goes. Why are they there? Is she doing sit-ups or some sort of pose right. or something like that? Right. Right. Super easy to burn down, though. Uh, you know, kind of maybe burn down that little piece on the left to make it go black and maybe try to get the right side to do the same. And I think that you'd have you know, uh, an exceptionally, a significantly better presentation mm. for this image. But other than that, I mean, the eyes and the face are sharp and the nose and the lighting and good and Rembrandt light. It's good. Not bad. Not bad. Cool. Yeah, I dig it. Yeah. And it, it, the eyes have it, right? <laughs> so. Right. Right. Definitely. That'd be a good sense. title for this one. The eyes have it. Yeah. All right, here's here's one from uh, Gigi Imbrick. She says, photo for the critique, fall color along the canal in Adirondack, Adirondack, Belgium, shot with her Fuji. Okay, let's bring this up. But look at those colors. Yeah. I want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen fall colors in forever, and I live in Southern California, so only fall colors I get are looking at other people's fall colors. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You know, we don't. Well, you live in California, period. I guess uh, closer to northern California, they actually have um, seasons. <laughs> so, yeah, we're down in, in northern regular northern California. Um, I mean, I, when I say northern, I mean extreme northern like Oregon, almost to Oregon. Um, but yeah, down by you, you all you guys get is the sunshine and blue sky, right? Space, right? <laughs> and confused, in confused vegetation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, this is this is cool though. So, subject wise, there's a boat coming down the river. Um, composition wise, um, it looks like she did everything right in this shot, right? Uh, for the most part, because I'm looking at it and her leading line is sort of bisecting or diagonally through the image. I like the processing; it's not overdone. It's not over, too crunchy on the uh the colors in there because it'd be easy to kind of fall into the trap of man those warm colors look great let me crank up the saturation and the clarity on them and make them really pop um it is image pops on its own i think especially with the reflection of those trees in the water and it's contrasty on its own because there's lots of dark in here with the trees and the shadows underneath the trees and the the foliage next to the the little stream or river there and then um, as you go up, you know, there's there's lighter areas to sort of balance it out. So I like it. And we have a subject in there. So there's kind of a story going on as well with this this tugboat or whatever that is coming down, coming down the river. I can imagine this. It makes that trip, you know, 30 times a day. And she caught it on this one shot. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I, I I'm not a huge fan of the boat in the shot. I, I don't think that it. It's adding for me to the overall scenicness of what I see as fall colors. Now that that's just my personal preference. Plus, I'm really worried for the ducks because <laughs> that they're boat's not moving fast, man. Come they're on. crossing. They're crossing the road, and there's no crossing guard. <laughs> oh, um, wait, wait, wait! Just, hold on, I got to press the button. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> Everybody just shook their head. I had to cue um, the audience, man. Come on. I do think there's two images in here, though, and and I think it's split right down the middle vertically. And that is, if you crop right, you know, right up the center, leave the path and the boat and the trees on the left. I think that's that's one story where the path leads into the boat, little fall color in the oh. distance, and I think that's neat. Yeah. But if you crop it and look at the right, where you have the ducks, the reflection, and the fall colors. 
crop down a little bit to get rid of that little highlight trap in the top, then you have this very traditional fall color image. And that's, I think, to me, the dichotomy of the two, the competition, is kind of like stressing my fall color brain out. That's cool. A little I bit. never even saw that. That it makes a hundred percent sense too. Yeah, I never saw that. Yeah, and and maybe 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 you know, Gigi likes it because it is that you mm-hmm. know parallel that mix. Um, but yeah. that's just how I see the image. I mean, I I I do dig it though. I would yeah. love to shoot fall colors one day. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is beautiful. It makes me want. It's one of those images that makes you want to be there, right? Right. Yeah. Mm. Want to throw a rock in the water. <laughs> All right. Moving right along. Here's a new uh, one of our new members, Jan. I'm 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 not even gonna. Well, I'm gonna try it. Bay Hinman. No. <laughs> Bay. Bay. Bayman. <sighs> I can't do it. I don't know. <laughs> so, Jan, please tell me how to pronounce your name. I'm butchering it <laughs> and I'm embarrassing myself. So tell me how to pronounce your name, Jan. So uh, this is a Jan has a body of work that is of burn survivors. And he's submitted a couple of images for us to look at. So let's take a look at these. Um, here's the first one. This woman was pregnant when he t- took this photo. Yeah, these these are immediately very powerful. Mm-hmm. Um you know, so so right away, I mean, you just you just realize, you know, that beautiful smile and and and, you know, the positiveness where she is in her life and being pregnant and all that stuff going forward, uh, considering, you know, what she's come out of. I mean, that's just that's just amazing for her and that she's able to show herself there and have that confidence. So that's awesome. I mean, that that is that is a project worth doing. So I'm, I'm I look forward to, you know, seeing more of his work and I hope that he can, you know, continue to create those. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a couple things in this image, though, from a portrait lighting standpoint, I kind of struggle with. And and one is it looks like her torso is floating because it's black on black and mm-hmm. there's no edge light. So she really needs an edge light to give her black clothing, you know, definition from the background. I love the black in the background and stuff. That's great. Yeah. Um, but there's no real separation there. Yeah. It does look and, like she's floating because she she's got black leotards or whatever on, on the bottom. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, I'm not sure if his intention is to light the scarring or to light her face and just let the scarring exist in the portrait. And that's, I'm not quite sure where he's going with that, but putting the light below and shining it up isn't really flattering for the face. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a ghoulish lighting. It's a monster lighting, right? Monster lighting. Yeah. And so I, I, I would suggest that, you know, maybe doing more of a traditional portrait lighting and let the scarring just sort of exist Mm -hmm. in the portrait. You know, you're not trying to hide it, but, you know, use those traditional portrait methods to light the mask of the face and really show off the eyes and bring out that that beautiful element Yeah, would would help. And we don't have appendages cut off, but the top of her head, it's almost there. It's right. like it's I wish it was there just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm excited to see uh, you, you and I were talking about before we started recording like these the images like this one. Um, uh, are kind of what Twit Pro is about, you know, is exposing other photographers to different genres of photography they mm-hmm. may not have even considered looking at. And just, you may not ever shoot this kind of thing, but it's interesting to see and understand people who do and why they do it and how they do it. Right. And th- it's just my personal preference. Mm-hmm. But my approach to a subject like this would be to light her like I would light any other model and just ignore that the scars exist. Mm -hmm. Now, that may not be the purpose of his project. And so that may change how he lights things. Yeah. Um, That would be my direction. Maybe that's an idea, Mm -hmm. you know. So I want to make sure that, you know, you know, that that he creates the portraits that he wants and use the lighting that's intentional for that method. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Well, a warm welcome to Jan name last name you will teach us how to pronounce <laughs> we'll stick with jan we'll stick with jan i can get that three letters i'm good with uh yeah so th- jan welcome to this to twip pro I appreciate you being here and appreciate your work thank you uh here's another one from jan this is the second photo um he took of a burn survivor um 
Oh, the name of this, his free work project is called Marks of Pride and Beauty. So yeah, definitely check it out. And he's on Facebook as well. So you can see some of his works there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Th th I really love the lighting in this one better. This, this one's like just out of the two, this one's my favorite because I love that warm. There's modeling on her face. The lighting is a little bit more traditional. Mm -hmm. Um, it's high and off to the right. It looks like she has two lights, uh, you know, one fill one, one main light. Um, my only, my only thing about portraits is I really like to see that back shoulder. Um, I think it gives a little bit more dimension to the body and we wouldn't get that right thumb kind of sticking out from the, nowhere. The appendage. Yeah. 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 And also if she turns slightly to her left, then it would open up a small triangle next to her waist mm -hmm. uh, behind her left arm. And we would see her waist on her right. And that would, that would give her in there a slimmer appearance. Mm hmm. You know, because then, uh, you know, body parts aren't stacking. Yeah. And you can see air through there. So, you yeah, know, your brain wouldn't automatically combine her torso with her arm and right. give the illusion of thickness. Yeah. Right. I mean, she's wearing a, a, a tight fitting shirt for a reason. I mean, she's she's proud of her figure. So let's show that off. Yeah. Just and it's just a slight twist. Don't even move the feet or anything. Just a little twist with the waist and a little bit more with the shoulders. And you're there. But I love it. Yeah, this is really nice. I really like this one. Very cool. All right. All right. Moving right along. We're cooking with gas today. Bam. All right. The next one, Mike Doran. Um, I love the grab shot. As you know, I'll never, as you never know what you'll get. This young lady is a friend's daughter and I called her over and this is the image I came away with. Uh, let's take a look at this. It's a grab shot. Nice. Yeah. Oh man. See, it makes me want to get on my dirt bike. <laughs> you have one? I do. Yeah. Oh, I have a Yamaha YZ250. Oh. Yeah. I love this stuff. I love this. Yeah. This is great. I can smell the two stroke now. <laughs> you're going out to ride tomorrow. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I have no place to ride. Uh, um, you're in LA. Just split lanes right through traffic on the 405. It's a dirt bike. <laughs> <laughs> it's even better. Right on top of the traffic. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, so uh, this shot, yeah, this this strikes me as a portrait. So uh, like he said, a grab shot portrait, which is great. You know, it's fine. And with a longer lens. So you're getting the circles of confusion in the background. Um, nice bokeh there. The what the nitpicking side of me is looking at. She's slightly off to the left of the frame. And I don't know if I'd want her more in the left and up a little bit or or, or more towards the right and the, have the frame panned down so her head, there's not so much head space in there or just tighter on her, you know, because she's got a great smile there and we know what she's doing. But, you know, people like you are going to want to know what kind of bike she's on. So you got Yamaha in there. So maybe, well, I can tell by the colors. <laughs> oh, there you go. So yeah. or maybe it's just maybe it's a crop down from the top left so that you lose some of that right space leave all the bike what's left of the bike in there but but crop down from the top and from the left to make her more the focus of the image there's really nothing in the background that i care about right so yeah uh, there's so much, much of it so much space on the right and on the top I, I think you could crop that tighter and it and it would do i think it would do a lot better just because of that we don't need all that extra space it doesn't add anything to the image no no unless you leave it there it's an editorial and it's you know some text or something needs to go true over. true yeah a uh, great image, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Good shot. She looks happy. She's having a good time. Yeah. Wouldn't you be if you were on that bike? Yes. I had a motorcycle. I miss my motorcycle. I had a, a Honda CBR F4i. Guess what color? Yellow. <laughs> Come on. Try again. <laughs> you know what color. You got it. It was black <laughs> and red, dude. Those are my black, colors. I was going to say it's black and red. <laughs> black and red. Are there any other colors? Yeah. Black and red. Loved it. I had a, a a red helmet with little stick on devil horns on the top. Of it. <laughs> yes, I was that guy. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. And back then, I, this was years ago. I had registered lanesplitters dot com, and I was going to do a motorcycle kind of community, you know, from for California Funny. motorcyclists. Because for those that don't know, in California, it is legal to for motorcycles to ride between vehicles in traffic. Uh, yeah, dangerous, exactly. but legal. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Moving right along. Here's another Sick, one from yeah. Mike. Mike says, panning is an art form 
uh, unto itself and practice makes perfect no matter what the subject. Yep. Of course. Just look at that. Jeez, look at that. Yeah, panning, panning is trial and error for sure, right? With this, you just like, I would imagine this is like, like hunting ducks. You just got to wait for it to go by again and try uh, and look at it. And yep. then, oh, nope, didn't get it. Try again. Keep going, keep going, keep going until you get a good shot. This one, he pretty much nailed it. I see a little bit of motion blur in there, but it looks like he pretty much nailed it. What do you think? No, I think this is great. This is this is um, a, a perfect example of like a motorsport panning shot where you've got the shutter speed just right and the panning just right so that you can identify the background. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what it is. It's not tires. pure blur. Yep. Um, there's motion in the tires, even though the front tire is off the ground. He was going fast enough that the momentum of that kept that tire going. But yet it's just fast enough that he's in focus his face is in focus or you we'll call it his eyes even looking forward yeah 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 his chin down his eyes are up we can see that in there yeah. um that is that is ideal this is this is fantastic i mean in a in a photojournalistic competition i mean you know between one and a hundred i could see this image scoring into the into the 90s easy nice yeah. without the dust spots of course you got to get rid of the dust spots but yeah yeah i see those i was gonna bring those up yeah that's 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 a click away um and there's a bunch of them on here too yeah, you yeah. could, could get rid of those really easily. Um, I was going to say, so we, we had started the dialogue in the last critique <clears throat> about uh, storytelling and the purpose of doing motorsports type photography. Was it not a criticism? Wait, hold on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not a cri criticism, but more of a, a valid question of when you see these these shots of cars coming through S-curves, what is the purpose? You know, Stephen Sharp responded, it's photojournalism and it's, you know, intended for the manufacturer or whatever. But, you know, when I look at a shot like this, I'm thinking like uh, I see kinetic energy. I know that front tire is off the ground. Like you said, shutter speed is such that I know what's going on in the background. I can see the, the rider looking forward and the tension. I can f almost feel him twisting that throttle, you know to get that thing going and leaning forward and knowing intrinsically every part of that vehicle. Like he knows that that he probably knows exactly how high up the ground that front tire is. Oh yeah. And he's accelerating. He mm -hmm. is, he's, he's focused 200, 300, 400 yards down the track mm -hmm. where he's going to be in a fraction of a second. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. I learned that the hard way, by the way, when I was <laughs> first learning to ride motorcycles that you don't look where you don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you it seems fundamental. It seems fundamental, but if you're on a if you're on a motorcycle, you don't look at right in front of your wheel. You look into the curve all the way around, and that's where you end up going. Am I right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not going to tell you how I learned that, but I learned it. <laughs> so, all right. Well, cool. Yeah. Thank you, Mike Doran, for that that yeah, shot. Great shot. Yeah. Very cool shot. Poster worthy shot. Speaking of poster worthy, our last shot is from Mike Doran. He says, crashing sucks, but if you're in the right place at the right time, it's neat if you can get the shot. Uh, okay. So he said he created these for usage by Sonoma Raceway, where he works as a staff photographer. That's up in this area, Northern California area. Look at that. See, wow. now if I was a writer, this is, this is one of those shots. This is one of those sort of it's a happy accident. I say it's a, it's an accident. Obviously, no one intended for this to happen. It's not happy because you don't want this guy to get hurt. You don't want his bike trash. You don't want anybody else hurt. But for the photographer, they're like, you know, they're showing concern outwardly, but inside they're fist pumping. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. After they after they get the cramp out of their hand for holding down that button. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. The shutter button. Yeah. Yeah. This this happened in the film days. This would probably happen when you were on a you were on exposure thirty four of a thirty six exposure roll. <laughs> like, crap. Yeah. yeah. I would I would really love to know uh, you know Mike when when you're shooting this kind of shot like are they is this a corner that when they come around you know you've got your finger down and you're just shooting you know rapid fire as they come around or did you see him wobble or something happen and then you said okay i got i gotta shoot this guy just in case you whip um, the camera up focus grabs and press and just yeah. hold and pray right yeah i mean it's like shooting dragsters because i've shot down at the fontana raceway shooting at the dragsters and you can you can kind of tell like when a guy gets a little bit loose 
you know, even halfway down the track, like you watch him, you, you, you know, you're shooting that one. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you learn to anticipate that. But this is, this is just great timing because even though it's cropped nice and tight and you've got sort of this abstract element thing going on, um, you got 64 in the right and technically that's 59, but if it's upside down, your brain says, well, maybe that's 65. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's scrapes. Nice catch. Yeah, there's scrapes in the back on the on the uh, black top, you know, from his bike. You can see there's even the dust or the powder is still there. Yeah. Right. The GoPro is cut loose. I want to see the footage from that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Off yeah. the fender. Yeah. Um, and his hands, his hands are just, you know, inches away from the handlebars. So this is his his foot is still underneath the bike. I mean. Yeah, that's crazy. What a great shot. I know this guy wants that shot for sure. Oh, yeah. I hope yeah. I hope he came out of it okay because, yeah. that you know, he's thrown away from the bike. That's a good thing. Yeah, I wonder if that bike survived. I'm guessing there's pieces. There were pieces after the after gravity had its way with it, right? Yeah, it had a few scratches probably. It's a few. It's a few. Great shot, though. Very cool. Yeah, I want to get out there. and Mike, I want to go out there with you and shoot this kind of stuff. That is beautiful. All right. Well, that's that's our last one. Let's yes, bring, sir. Let's bring us back on the on the screen here. Look at that. We got through them. That's two shows we did in one day, man. Look at that. <laughs> two recordings. Two full. So if I have my way, that and both of these will be posted today. So two full episodes edited and published in one day. That's uh that's a that's with a laugh track. With wait wait. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> so ridiculous. It's so cheesy. <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm testing. I'm testing. Because the, the configuration here, we revealed this in the last show. Um, but the config that I'm using here is a green screen. So behind me is a, um, this is actually an Elgato green screen. It actually pulls up. Let me turn off the the effect here. So that's what's really behind me is just a green screen, which means I can uh, I can put myself in whatever location I want to put myself in, which is kind of cool. Um, but the part of what I'm doing is I wanted to build this configuration so that I can do all different kinds of sh- or do a variety of different kinds of shows, change the background, change the audio, change the intro music, the e- intro sequence and have a completely different show or you know, other kind of content, whether I'm building content for TWIP school, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a method to my madness. It's not all just fun and games with my <laughs> laugh track. So, <laughs> so that's what I geek out on doing this kind of stuff. Ultimately, I should have a bank of different sounds I can make. So when you say something about black and white, I'll press a button and it'll be. <sighs> <laughs> You know, anyway, ultimate power, you know, during the show. So, <laughs> so cool, man. So we're, we're, we're just about done here. Uh, before we go, I wanted to get your, I want to do a quick check-in with you on your, your Z7. Is the love affair still going on? <sighs> are you, are you in divorce court yet? Or you guys still love know? it? Really? I do. I do. It is, it is the best camera that I've had since like the D4. Um, cause when the, when we went from the D three, the D three S to the D four, uh, Nikon really made a big push in, in quality and functionality and just, you know, just everything. The Z seven is, is revolutionary for Nikon, but not just for Nikon. I think in, they did a lot of things right compared to like having shot Sony mm-hmm. and, uh, it, it is really amazing the image quality the ability to focus the way that it focuses in the light uh the quality the focus tracking all those things Love it. you know i could go on and on. i mean we could do a full review of it i mean it's i think you we'll, know. We'll, we'll need to do one we'll definitely need to do one now now that you've you've shot a couple of weddings with it right you're a couple of weddings uh, deep on it four weddings and a handful of engagement sessions okay. yeah so, so we're we're ready to do a review so let's uh, yeah i've let's got a couple of nits i got a couple of nits yeah but other than that i've been i've been very impressed okay all right. Well, congrats on that. I spent some time in the Nikon booth and the energy in that booth was uh, was present, you know, so lots, Good. Of, lots of exciting, excited 
Troy Miller's running around the black and gold over there. <laughs> so. Well, you know, I, I think it's fair to say, though, too, is because Canon came out with their mirrorless. Mm. And, you know, even though I think that that has some hiccups within and of itself, the Canon community is super excited. I got a buddy of mine that picked one of those up and he just he's just as stoked yeah. because um, it works within the ecosystem that he's used to. So I think the the Camry manufacturers made a good call by building a, a camera that works within the existing ecosystems of Canon and Nikon. Mm -hmm. uh, and then of course, you know, whatever benefits that, that leads them to. Yeah. You know, well, it was a good call. It was a necessary call. It was a late call. Uh, and which means it was kind of a tourniquet call because a lot of people were just like, well, are they really going to do anything? And everybody's talking about that Sony stuff. Maybe I should go get that, you know? So, yeah, they had to you know, stop the bleeding somehow or else it was not reversible. Yeah. Well, cool. All right, man. Well, uh, where should people go if they want to connect with Troy Miller and see your work online? Uh, SpicyJello.com. All right. All roads, it. all roads lead to the Spicy Jello where you are now blogging at, right? I am. I am. I'm, I'm two days behind on my next post. So <laughs> welcome to the world of blogging, bro. <laughs> I've written them there. There's many, many, many written. Um, it's just getting them, you know, uh, tuned to be put out there in the world. So, Trust yeah, me. but it's fun. It's a brain dump. It's my brain dump. It's it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, imagine if you had to do video and edit it and publish that and all. Like, mm -hmm. nope. Somebody tried to convince me to do that and I went, nope. <laughs> hey, it's easy. You know, it's just like anything else. Who said that? It's, you know, repetition. Repetition is the mother of skill. Right. Oh, wait, my la my laugh track. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right man we'll leave it at that uh we'll see you next time troy miller sounds great all right man. all right buddy. take care all right. peace Bye. this is twitter